This video is um, about where I'm at after dipping my toe into uh, activities on the relatively new 2200 meter band at 136 kilohertz. So this is the uh, lowest frequency band available to radio amateurs in Australia and that's generally true around the world. The um, issue I have is uh, a uh, suitable antenna. The uh, main HF dipole has proved uh, useless at this frequency due to the uh, various impedance transformers in the system. Um, they tend to be uh, efficient from 500 kilohertz and above, making them fairly useless at this frequency uh, because of the uh, attenuation that they'll introduce. So uh, the other two antennas I have available um, is a 40 meter sloper antenna. Um, so this antenna only has a choking balance in the system. So while it won't be doing much choking at 136 kilohertz, it also won't introduce any um, losses. Um, so uh, there'll be no attenuation at 136 kilohertz or pretty much any other frequency uh, with this antenna. The uh, other antenna I looked at was a uh, active antenna that I've used um, previously on uh, low frequencies. Uh, but comparison between the two um, showed the uh, sloper um, being about 15 dB better um, at 136 kilohertz. So uh, uh, the uh, sloper will be the uh, antenna that uh, will be used on this band. The uh, gear setup for reception is an AirSpy HF Discovery SDR receiver. Um, really enjoy operating um, this unit, so relatively inexpensive, um, targeted at the um, HF and uh, lower frequencies. The uh, specs claim that it's uh, capable of receiving down to a ridiculously low 500 hertz, um, certainly capable of um, 136 kilohertz. Um, so uh, this will be run in conjunction with uh, SDR Sharp software, uh, fairly common for um, SDR receivers. Certainly not the only one, but uh, I, I quite like it, simple to uh, operate. The uh, decoding application uh, will be uh, WSJTX. This is a suite of programs including uh, Whisper for uh, weak signal uh, reception. Uh, the uh, trick here is that the audio needs to be routed from one application to the other and uh, so I will be using a uh, piece of software called VB Cable. Uh, this is a virtual cable that will link the um, SDR Sharp to the WSJT applications. Um, so essentially everything that I can receive on the um, SBI receiver uh, will be routed to any other application that I want to uh, link to the um, virtual cable. So this allows me to uh, decode signals, it allows us to analyze signals, so uh, this is the uh, way this needs to be set up. Um, I can't hear the signals in an audio sense, but that's um, probably not a real problem. It's mostly um, quite objectionable noise in a way. Um, but the um, system will uh, analyze and uh, decode the uh, signals that we uh, want to look at. The 2200 meter band appears to be uh, pretty close to useless during daylight hours due to um, mainly the uh, massive amounts of man-made noise uh, generated um, clearly from local solar rooftop power systems, uh, including mine. Um, so uh, a future project will be to uh, install some mains filtering on the income, incoming power um, unless the uh, energy is being radiated, but nonetheless the band is uh, extremely noisy during daylight. Um, it's really strong evidence that it's um, rooftop solar systems. Um, pretty much on sunset the uh, noise abruptly disappears. 
Uh, as you can see on the screen now, there's a bit of video of the um, cutoff. Um, so we've got noise and then abruptly the uh, inverter shut down, noise disappears. This is uh, WSJTX, a uh, suite of uh, weak signal modes, um, FT8, JT65, etc., Whisper. It's a very common weak signal beaconing mode. Uh, however, for the uh, lower frequency bands, a uh, mode that's probably not exclusive but uh, fairly commonly used is uh, FST4W. Uh, so we've got some selections down here that we can make, or we even need to make. Um, so we need to um, select the uh, receive uh, um, spot on the waterfall at 1500 Hz and the uh, bandwidth of 100 Hz. Now we can also select uh, a number of uh, submodes. There's four submodes uh, starting with uh, a uh, time duration of uh, transmit and receive of 120 seconds. Uh, we can also select 300. This is probably the most common submode. Uh, also 900 seconds and 1800 seconds, which essentially means you'll be transmitting and receiving the decode um, over a period of half an hour, which uh, is quite incredible. So uh, that's uh, how the uh, JS JTX uh, is uh, set up. The advantage uh, of FST4W modes is the ability to decode uh, extremely weak signals, um, vastly superior to the uh, standard uh, whisper mode. The uh, standard whisper mode will recover reliably down to uh, minus 28 dB signal to noise ratio, but um, the experience is you can go down um, below that. Um, however, that's the uh, reliable figure, the conservative figure. Um, FST4W-120 uh, uh, will decode reliably down to uh, minus 32 dB uh, with an incredibly uh, narrow bandwidth of uh, 5.9 Hz. The uh, more common uh, FST4W-300 uh, will decode down to uh, negative 36 dB uh, with a bandwidth of 2.2 uh, Hz. Uh, we now get into the more extreme sub-modes, uh, FST4W900, so this is 900 seconds of transmission and uh, reception decoding. Um, we'll decode down to uh, negative 41 dB and we assume that it will actually go below that but the uh, conservative figure is uh, negative 41 dB with uh, a bandwidth of 0.72 Hz and uh, at the uh, far extreme end of this mode uh, FST4W-1800 which is literally transmission and reception decoding of 30 minutes uh, will decode down to uh, an incredible minus 44 dB signal to noise. Again, we'll assume it can actually do slightly better than that even. Um, the uh, bandwidth uh, for this submode is 0 0.36 Hertz. Um, it's quite incredible. So um, Good reception of the um, VK6MJM uh, at a uh, distance of uh, 297 kilometers, uh, though very consistent. Um, the uh, transmissions for VK6MJM seem to start around about sunset and continue into the late evenings, around about uh, 10 o'clock. 10.30 in the evening. Um, so I've uh, charted um, my receptions of that signal uh, from uh, VK6MJM uh, from uh, 7 
100 hours UTC to uh, 1530 UTC uh, for three evenings, the uh, 3rd, 4th and 5th of August. Um, the interesting thing to take away from this is that the uh, signals are incredibly consistent. Um, they vary between minus 1 to uh, minus 7 dB signal to noise ratio, but they're more consistently around the center, around you know minus 4, minus 5 dB. Um, incredibly consistent throughout the um, entire monitoring period and from day to day. The, um, the other signal to note, um, as mentioned before, VK4YB at uh, 3,523 kilometres in whisper mode. Um, so that was decoded um, several times uh, at minus 30 and minus 32 dB. Um, VK4YB was also uh, decoded in uh, FST4W300. Uh, at minus 33 and minus 34 on the uh, 4th of August. Also an oddity that I almost was not going to mention. Um, on the 3rd of August 2024, 9 o'clock in the evening, uh, I decoded a station BK6NLG, which is uh, looks like a Chinese call sign. I was... Uh, unable to verify the uh, authenticity of that call but it does look authentic um, it was decoded in FST4W-120 so in that sub mode this was the only station that uh, I've uh, decoded um, the uh, signal to noise ratio was minus 32 dB so very close to the limit um, like I say I was unable to uh, verify the call sign and the uh, maidenhead code um, appeared to be in error. Um, but other than that, it, it does look like um, potentially an authentic station. So um, that's the uh, summary of uh, my uh, listening for uh, three days on the 2200 meter band. Quite interesting um, that I was able to receive anything, but we've uh, had quite good success. So uh, I tend to uh, do more monitoring sessions on this band and also the uh, 600 metre band in the various modes. And um, we'll try to uh, develop the uh, receive techniques if we can uh, improve things there. But nonetheless, it does demonstrate that um, this band is accessible from at least a reception point of view with uh, a very basic setup. Again, thank you for watching.